Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the Bunny Ears Soap Sack, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description to get the full written pattern, as well as right and left-handed video tutorials and links to all the supplies you need. Or you can search MooglyBlog.com Bunny Ears Soap Sack. To make this pattern, you need a USH 5mm crochet hook. This one is by Susan Bates. You'll also need 20 to 50 yards of Lily Sugar and Cream per soap sack. And the reason for this range is that it comes in two sizes. We have this size here for standard size bar soaps and this size here, which is sized for hotel soaps. Now, this hotel soap size makes a great treat bag, as does this one, to fill up their Easter basket. Then you can fill it with soap later. And I really love this size because not only is it cute, but it's a great size for little ones who are just learning to take care of themselves to make that soap a little bit more grippy and make bath time a little bit more fun. You'll also need your standard crochet supplies, scissors and stitch markers. Both of these soap sacks are made the same way, from the bottom up. We start with a row and then we work in rounds for some simple mesh. And then at the top, we do a couple more rounds where we add these fun bunny ears. And then in the final round, we complete the ears and then we add this little space right here. So then you can put in your favorite brand of bar soap right in that pouch and then just tuck those bunny ears right through that opening right there. That holds the soap nice and secure and those bunny ears act as great hanging loops for hanging your sack up in the shower when you're all done. To begin our bunny ears soap sack, if you're making the large size, you start with a chain of 13. If you're making the smaller size, you start with a chain of 10. Otherwise, the construction is pretty much the same. It's just the stitches and row counts that are different. So today, for the sake of time, I'm going to demo the smaller one. So I've made three chains. I've got a few more to go here. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's double count those here and double check rather. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 chains made. So now for the first row, we're simply going to skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in each remaining chain across for a total of nine single crochets. Again, if you're making the larger size, you'll have more single crochets because you started with a longer chain. So I am simply going to find that second chain and single crochet across. I really like to work into the back hump of that chain, the underneath of the chain, if you will. When I make these stitches, I think it gives a nicer finished bottom edge or bottom to my bag, if you will. But you can work under the top two loops or under just the front loop or the back loop. However you prefer to work into the chain is fine. I just find that this one gives a really nice solid bottom to the bottom of our soap sack. So simply single crochet across till you reach the end of your chains and then we'll be ready to switch to rounds for round two. So at the end of row one, you should have a just a simple row of single crochet. For round two, we're going to begin working in rounds. And it's the same way for both sizes, just the stitch count is different. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and chain one and turn or turn and chain one, however you like to do it. And then we're just going to single crochet in each stitch across as if we were still working in rows. So at this point though, I do want to, since they're switching to rounds, go ahead and put a stitch marker right in that first stitch. It's really going to help us out as we continue around even here in round two. So just single crochet here in each stitch till we get to the end of this row. And I'll see you when we get there. That'll be halfway through round two. Okay, here I've got my last stitch in row one. So I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch right there. But now to continue working in the round, we're going to put a single crochet in the foundation chain of each one of those stitches of round one. So we don't wanna work in the side of round one, we wanna come right on over here to the bottom of that first stitch. So it's okay to just go ahead and curl it right up however it's comfortable for you. We want that to be a nice sized single crochet. We don't want it stretched out. Even though we're making that move, we can really fold up our fabric to get it there together as needed. Then we just continue on across as if it were any other row. This is where I really like having worked into that back hump because now it's like I'm working into any other row even though I'm actually working into that foundation chain. So now we just continue to single crochet across and after I've got these first half or so of the row made, 
I will go ahead and flip this right side out. We're going to be making this bag all from one side, all from the right side of the bag, the outside, if you will. So we can just go ahead and flip that around. And now that's a nice and tight line there. We don't have any gaps. So we continue on across here to the end of this foundation chain. So basically, however many stitches you had in round one now at the end, or excuse me, row one, at the end of round two, you will have twice as many because we worked in the top and the bottom of each of those stitches. So now I'm back in the bottom of that stitch right next to the foundation chain, or excuse me, the slip stitch rather. So now I know I am ready to go ahead and join to that first stitch there with a slip stitch. So again, I want to go ahead and fold up my fabric so that it's a nice and tight slip stitch. We're not going to be working into that slip stitch or anything like that. We just want it to be nice and tight so we don't have any odd gaps. Then we can sort of flip that end there, right side out again. And there you have round two. Okay, so now we're ready to begin round three, which is the same for both sizes. Again, the only difference is the stitch count. So we start with a chain one and a single crochet in the first stitch. We want to make sure to move our stitch marker on up to that new first stitch of our round. And we'll want to do this every round because mar marking the first stitch of these mesh rounds is really important to help us keep on track. Then we begin our repeat. Chain three, skip two, single crochet in the next. So one, two, three, skip two stitches, single crochet in the next. Let's do that again. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two stitches, single crochet in the next. And we'll repeat that until only two stitches are left. Okay, so I've made my chain three loops, single crocheting after each one here, but now we have two stitches left. It looks like three, but remember that one's our slip stitch. We've got our first stitch marked there, our slip stitch, just two stitches remain. So to finish off this round, rather than chaining again and joining with a slip stitch, we are going to join with a double crochet. We don't chain at all first. That double crochet is going to act as our chain three space. So after making that final single crochet, we yarn over, come all the way over here to that first marked stitch, and put a double crochet right in that stitch, just like that. So that becomes the join at the end of round three, and that's how we'll join all our mesh rounds. So to continue on with your soap sack, we continue with the mesh for rounds four through 10 for the larger size and rounds four through seven for the smaller size. However, these rounds do not begin with a chain one as most single crochet rounds do. We're going to instead just go right into this space. We just made that double crochet, but we're going to call it a chain three space, just like all these other chain three spaces. So just immediately go right into that space underneath that double crochet, yarn over and pull up a loop and make your first single crochet of the round. If you look at it, you can see this looks a little bit more like a standard single crochet than if we chained one first. I tried this pattern both ways and it really does look better if you skip that chain one. So now, since this is the new first single crochet of our round, I'm going to move our slip stitch up to this stitch. Now we're ready to begin the rest of our mesh for this round. So we chain three, one, two, three, and jump over to that next chain three space. Just find that next chain three loop and single crochet right in the loop. We don't have to try and find that center chain to crochet in there, just crochet right into that chain space. Chain three again, two, three, single crochet in the next chain through three loop. And we're going to continue that all the way around until you've single crocheted in the very last chain three loop. Now I have single crocheted in each one of those chain three loops. I can tell because this next chain three loop or really a double crochet over there has that marked first stitch of the round in it. So now I know it's time to join again with a double crochet. So we yarn over and insert our hook right in that very first stitch of the same round. When we work our double crochet, that puts us just in the right spot to start our next round of mesh. So we continue on for the next several rounds, making our mesh the exact same way as we did in round four. We just start off with that single crochet right in that space and then chain three again and continue around, joining with a double crochet. When you've made the number of rounds of mesh called for for the size you're making, that should bring this join, which as you can see is now traveling across our work 
to the opposite side of your soap sack. So if your gauge is a little different or if you're playing with this pattern and adjusting it for a custom project for perhaps a large oversized um, handmade soap or something like that, or just a larger treat that you want to use it for, just make sure that you work your rounds of mesh until you end up back on one side. Basically, you want to end up joining over here at the side so that you can start your um, start the top of your sack in a really nice place so that your ears and your opening at the top will line up. Again, if you're adjusting the size of this, you may need to use stitch markers to decide, sort of figure out where you wanna put your ears and your loop opposite each other, but it's just a lot easier if you work your mesh until your hook ends up on the opposite side of your sack. Now I've switched over to the larger size of the bunny soap sack and I've worked all the mesh rounds for this size. We can see here our first round of mesh is round three. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So I also wanted to point out that when I joined with a double crochet, you can see that landed me right along the side of the soap sack. So that's a better visual of what I was talking about before. So now we're ready for the last two rounds of our soap sack. If you're making the large, this will be rounds 11 and 12. If you're making the smaller size, it's rounds eight and nine. So for this one, we do have some stitch count differences. So do be sure to check the pattern for which one you're making to make sure you get your stitch counts just right so that your bunny ears and your opening to put the bunny ears through are nicely centered on either size side rather. Again, if your gauge is slightly different, you may need to adjust those by a stitch or two. Just take a look at the finished project and you can kind of move those around as needed, if needed. So let's continue on as written. I'm gonna get my hook back in our loop here and we're ready to begin with round 11. So I joined my final round of mesh with our double crochet. So to begin our next round, we're going to work two single crochets around the post of that double crochet. So basically right into that chain space again. So there's one and two. Now I still want to go ahead and move up that stitch marker, still in my first stitch from the previous round. So I will go ahead and put it in the first of those two single crochets we just made. There we are. Then to continue around, we're going to work three single crochets in the next chain space. One, two, three. And again, these stitch counts may be different if you're making the smaller size. What we're going to do next is work a single crochet in the next chain space, then chain 11, one, two, and these can be tight chains. We're not going to work back into them. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, 10, 11. There we are. Then slip stitch in the single crochet just made. So that's that single crochet we made right before we started chaining. So we just wanna come from the side, but go under those top two loops. We can sort of wrap our yarn right around the side of that stitch pull that loop up and through, and then simply slip stitch. We've made our first bunny ear loop here. We're gonna add some stitches to it, obviously, but now it's nice and anchored right there. Then we single crochet in that same chain space. Then we make the beginning of our second bunny ear. We chain 11 again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and slip stitch in the top of that single crochet just made. Same thing, we insert our hook under those top two loops like we normally would, and then we can just wrap that yarn right around the side of the stitch there and pull it through for our slip stitch. There we are. Then to finish that repeat, we single crochet in that same chain space again, like so, and then we simply work three single crochets in each remaining chain space around until we get back to that first chain three space, space, which was of course actually our double crochet. Now I had a little bit of a yarn break, so I had to switch yarns there. So please ignore those tails. You won't normally have a yarn break there in tails, but it happens. I'm using up some odds and ends to make these and I ran out of yarn, but you should be of course, probably working from all one skein. So you won't have those tails there. I just wanted to explain them in case anybody saw those and got confused. So right now I'm just continue to, continuing rather to work three single crochets in each of these chain three spaces around until I get back to that 
first one that we made with our double crochet. So I'll see you when we get there. So I've continued to work three single crochets in each of those chain three loops around, and now we're back at where our beginning. You can see our first stitch there. So I wanna go into that chain space, or really that double crochet space one more time, because if you'll remember, we only put two single crochets in there to begin. So now it's got its third, and we can join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet made for this round. And then we're ready to begin the final round of our soap sack. So now for our final round, we're going to solidify those bunny ears and add the small slit for them to go through that closes up our sack. Again, you'll have some slight stitch count variations on this one, depending on the size you're making. And if you're making your own adjustments to this pattern, you'll want to use stitch markers and sort of plan out where you need to put that opening to make sure it's opposite your bunny ears. So to begin, we're going to start with a chain one. And then here for our larger size, we single crochet in the first five single crochets. So we go right back in that first stitch for our first stitch. And you can move that stitch marker up if you like, or you can leave it off. It is our last round. There we are. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. And remember, I am making the larger size. So those are the numbers I'm referring to. You can see this brings us up to that first bunny ear right there. So now in this chain 11 loop, we're going to work 15 single crochets. Why 15? For me, that filled up my loop really nicely. It gave it a great look. But if you find that your bunny ear looks better with 14 or with 16 or 17, it's totally fine. It's however many single crochets give it a nice firm look and fill up this chain 11 loop. So the actual stitch number doesn't matter. Just make sure you put the same number of single crochets in each loop of your ears. But you can just eyeball it or you can count out 15 if you like. The whole point is just to cover those chains really nicely and create those really great looking bunny ear loops. So obviously I haven't been counting. I've just been single crocheting around, but I'm coming up to the end here. So I'll tuck that other one out of the way and see how many I have made so far. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. One more should finish it off nicely. So again, the stitch count for this part doesn't really matter. It's whatever gives you a really nice firm bunny ear there. So then we simply, after putting our single crochets in our first ear, we jump right straight to the next ear. Don't need to single crochet in between those, although if you wanted to, you could. We're just going to jump right to our next chain 11 loop and start putting the same 15 or again, 14, 16, 17, however many single crochets look good on your project right in those chain 11 loops. I did use the same size bunny ear loops for both sizes of the soap sack, but this is another place where you could customize it. Make longer ears, make shorter ears, make them into just a simple loop. If you don't really want the bunny theme, it's totally up to you. Again, we're just giving this a nice solid look. But once you've got one, I recommend you use the same number of stitches on the second ear just to make sure they do look the same. Looks like I need to pull up a little bit more of my yarn here. There we go. So I'll put in one more stitch, maybe two, and then see how close we are to 15 on this one. So we can just start counting right there from the beginning of this ear. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that worked out really well. So after we've solidified that bunny ear, then we need a single crochet in the next nine stitches. So we wanna find that next single crochet right there. So there's one, and then we're working back down into the ones that are worked sort of around these, this loop here. So there's three, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. There we are. And then we should be able to skip four and chain four, so rather chain first, let's chain four first. One, two, three, four. We're not going to be working back into those chains. They can be a little tighter if needed. Then we skip those four. One, two, three, four. That will be the opening to put our ears through. And then we're just going to single crochet in each remaining stitch. 
We should have a total of four remaining stitches if you're making the large size. So let's see, there's two and three, and there's our fourth. So to finish off, we can slip stitch that first stitch, or you can join with a seamless join if you prefer. To make the seamless join, which I think looks a little bit nicer, we can go ahead and cut our yarn. Just simply pull up on that yarn end. So we take that yarn end and put it on our yarn needle. There, whoop. get that through, there we go. And then what we want to do is instead of slip stitching to that first stitch, our marked stitch right there, I'm going to take my yarn needle and go under the second stitch of this round. I'll go ahead and get my stitch marker out of the way at this point, we are done with it. So I'm just going to go right under those top two loops. And then what I want to do is basically create a false top for this stitch right here. So I'm going, you can see the yarn's coming out right there and it goes under that stitch. I want to put that needle right back in that same spot the yarn's coming out of. And then only pull until it creates essentially a false stitch from the top right there. And you can see this way we don't have the bump or the jog that's created by the slip stitch. So now when I weave that end in, I like to put it through the top of the stitch that really was right there to sort of secure it. And then from there, you can simply weave in that end as you normally would. For now, I'll just go ahead and tuck all our ends into our bag. And of course, you can take your time and weave all these ends before you do give them away. But I want to make sure you can see there we are. We've got our soap sack. Once your ends are weaving, woven in, rather, it's ready to fill with soap or treats, whatever you like. And then we've got this chain four loop. We simply send our bunny ears right through that loop and it seals it up nice and tight. And that's how to crochet the bunny ears soap sack. Again, you'll find the free pattern as well as right and left-handed video tutorials and links to all the supplies you need on mooglyblog.com. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.